The issue of retrenchment was always mentioned rather stealthily in passing and in reference to other matters under discussion. That is how it was mentioned. But I remember, and this is important, that whenever it was mentioned, because I had my own position on it, because it involved security of charge, I advised that as far as persons who have been retired from the civil service but who are among to mount uh, employment terms, they can go because they are retired. As far as persons who are very close to the retirement age were concerned, that was not a problem. They can be asked to retire early, to make room for others. But that as far as young persons were concerned, and persons who had financial and other obligations, even if they occupied positions that were determined redundant, we should come up with a program of training and a program of special projects. And we should redeploy them from those redundant positions into a special program given the training. And we can ask for resources in order to do that. Because you know the situation in the country. And I made this recommendation because during my time in government, I wasn't always locked up in an office. I believe a lot that to manage the affairs in countries like ours, you have to know how much time to spend in an office, and you, know how, you have to know how much time to spend in a field, in a field, so that you are close with the problems on the ground. And that is why I made this recommendation. Furthermore, in my own constituency, I have what is called constituency office hours every Tuesday beginning at 9 and ending sometimes 12 or 1 o'clock. Persons in my constituency who have problems, they know where to find me, they will come there, we discuss the problems together and try to find solutions. For the first nine weeks of 1987, 228 persons came. And why I know it is because I keep a diary of everyone who comes, what the problem discussed was and what the solution agreed upon was. And I will tell you 169 of these, or approximately 75% was saying, Mr. President, help me to find a job. That was not unique, but that was my own constituency for the first eight weeks of 1987. With that kind of experience, how then do you expect a person like me to agree to retrain 1,800 monthly paid workers many of whom are young, and hundreds of other daily paid workers, many of whom from my own constituency, whom I promised that I would work and serve in their own interests. And after I made me my rec these recommendations, they were brushed aside. In fact, the Honorable Francis Alexis suggested that there should be an unemployment levy to help generate more jobs before one can even think about retrenchment. Again, we were brushed aside. It was not until April the 10th I had to make my contribution to the 1987 budget debate. It was some time since the budget was presented. I prepared my presentation about six weeks before. Six weeks before. No one really knew what I was going to say. But I felt that in that presentation in Parliament, I would again advise the government on the approach to this matter of retrenchment. That's what I did. In fact, I was more pressed to do it because I had just returned from Colombia attending a regional conference on UNESCO and found on my desk over six to seven names to be sent home. And together with that, a law that we were supposed to support in Parliament, whereby the right of a public worker to appeal to the Public Service Commission if he felt or she felt that he or she was unfairly dealt with by an officer in authority, we had to agree to the revocation of that right, to abolishing that right, that right to appeal. I phoned the Prime Minister, tell him, I cannot go along with that. 
That right was enshrined in the law books 18 years ago. And I do not want to go down in history because I am a student of Grenadian and Caribbean history. I have written some of it. I do not want to go down in history as a man who reduced or removed the right from 7,000 workers to appeal for a, a public service commission which is supposed to be a non-partisan body in cases where they felt that they were unjustly done. He said that he was expecting me to support that. I said, no way, I cannot and I will not. So, I can also ask, ask, ask him whether or not we have put any training programs to assist those persons who will be in positions that are considered redundant. No. So on Friday, the 10th of April, I made my three-hour contribution to the parliament. And I advised the government. I suggested seven strategies that we should employ in order to help create jobs, to deal with the unemployment problem, and to avoid the bitter pill of retrenchment, particularly upon those persons who are the only breadwinner in the home and who have no alternative. I made my contribution. Interestingly, after my contribution, I was congratulated by the Honorable Danny Williams. Ask him, he will tell you. He came up and he congratulated me. He said, excellent presentation. I said, very good, my brother. Thank you. I was also congratulated by the Honorable Pauline Andrews. Ask her. Danny said, man, the way you spoke about education, you made me feel good. <laughs> we are colleagues. We are they, were the, they were the two who congratulated me. On Monday, at the, preceding, at the following cabinet meeting, I was told, not only myself, but myself and others, that the chairman said, we are not pleased with your own contribution and what you said in parliament. And therefore, usually you refer to me as George I. George I, you would have to either have to apologize publicly, which would be on the radio, or you would have to tender your resignation. So I, so I, I mean, let me tell you. I, I don't often feel insulted in my life. But that was one time I genuinely feel I said, look, you really don't know my origin. I'm simple. I take time to make my mind. When I make my mind, it's because I am committed to those things I make my mind about. And I said, you will have my resignation instantaneously. I don't have to go and consider it because under me, under no stretch of the imagination, would George I resign, apologize publicly for things I feel were right. I must also tell you that if I feel that I'm in the wrong, I'm not proud or arrogant not to say I am sorry. And I will also give you news. I have said things within the NNP already indicating and told him, telling them that I am sorry for this. I'm not a person who is bigoted. If I'm wrong, I admit I am wrong. It doesn't take out half of me. If I'm right, I stick to it. Because I feel, and I believe, that a man's own integrity and his honesty with the people whom he has to serve is far more important than a few dollars from a movement. My I am not one of my colleagues who boasts of how much money he makes in the United States. I got my comfort from serving the people of the country because I got all my education from their sweat and I decided to give my contribution to that thing. Envy no man, jealous no man, serve the country and you will be a proud and patriotic leader. Being put as a result of this very retrenchment. George Sandford for 27 years, a teacher. He lives in River Road. 27 years he has been giving his service to the boys and girls and to the parents of the country. Even on weekends, when other people go gallivanting, George Sandiford would be helping them, helping them to mature, giving them character.
so that they can be proud nationals in the years to come. After 21, he said, after 27 years of service, my brothers and sisters, George Sandiford was given a retrenchment letter. I ask you, is that the way to treat a man after he has given 27 years in education in Grenada under the most trying circumstances over the years? I know these trying circumstances because I've been in the classroom throughout the country with men like George Sandiford. That is why I'm proud to have stood up in defense and against retrenchment. I will also tell you one of the best science teachers in St. Andrew's Secondary School, not SAS, the recent open secondary school. One of the best teachers, best science teachers, was sent home on the retreat. And when the administration felt and recognized its error, they asked her to return. She said she's not returning because that is not the way to treat a national after they have devoted their energies to the welfare of the children of the country. And she has gone into the insurance company. A strong woman, I respect her, because we must not always sell ourselves for a few dollars more. A young man, again from River Road, he is projects officer in the Ministry of Education. Just because he comes from a constituency where the parliamentary representative of that area is unpopular, is not wanted, is criticized, is stoned, is shouted at, for one reason or the other, Romains seem to be getting the blame for others. And this young man, as project officer, has just been again retrenched. And a non-national is doing his job. I'll give you a last case on that matter, because there are many places. In fact, let me just add in passing that the very application of the retrenchment seems to be much more political than administrative. Persons have been pinpointed to be sent home just because they share a political opinion different to that of the government, or maybe critical of the government. We must not learn to understand that one of the basic and fundamental constitutional rights is the right of a man or a person to have their own opinion. Freedom of speech and freedom of conscience. And we cannot be Democrats on the one hand and be authoritarian on the other by crushing these fundamental freedoms either by the way we behave or by the tactics we employ. Fourth case is that of a man who was heading community development. He's worked well in that area. In fact, he worked for two and a quarter years under the Honorable Danny Williams. And I have heard that minister speak in complimentary terms about the services he received from that voter. What it so happened that during the retrench, during the reshuffling, community development was taken away from the Honorable Danny Williams and was given to keep the job. So that man who headed community development now was employed in Keith Mitchell's ministry. I know because it has been said that he's a critic of Mitchell. But what is that? People criticize me. I skin I cry. What is that? People criticize. They always criticize you. What is that? Listen to it. If it's good, you benefit from it. If it's bad, you discard it. Oh no. The very month. August of this year, when that young man was taking unto himself a bride, is the very month he received his letter of retrenchment. He received it just before his wedding. So he was retrenched. A wedding gift. A wedding gift. <laughs> <laughs> and whom do you think was put in, in his place? A non national. So that is why you see, my brothers and sisters, we're talking about serious issues. I am no one to, if the government does something good, even though I'm in opposition, I'm not bigoted not to accept it. When there are issues that are small, or persons in the country who have very little alternative, I don't want to articulate the grievances. I cannot go along with that. That was 
the third and major issue. By taking that decision, and as I told you, I sleep well at night. I sleep well at night. And when I walk the street, I don't have to walk with one security. I don't have to walk with six security. I drive my car myself, sometimes 12 o'clock in the morning. Because your best security is how well you live with your people and how well you represent them.